Tux Replay Debuggers. We are using the Salesforce Developer Console and there we have the Logs tab. That's what we are using so far for debugging. And we can also create the debug log by going to the set tab, debug log, and uh, we can set it up the user level or Apex class level. All those things we can do it. Uh, so that is the one way, that is the classic way that we are uh, doing it currently. So there are another ways are there. Since uh, Visual Studio code is evolving for the development purpose, uh, we have the ability to debug uh, from Visual Studio code as well. So we will uh, see few things. One is uh, testing. You guys already know testing is making sure our features are working fine and to find if there is any bugs. And debugging, it is next process. If there is any issue is found, debugging we do to find the root cause of the issue and to fix that issue. So the, this is the basic thing. Everyone is aware about it. And the difference between Salesforce developer console debug log or setup debug log and Apex replay debugger differences. So it's same debug log. It is generated on the Salesforce end, but we are importing that visual that debug log in the Visual Studio code and we are debugging from Visual Studio. So here it's having nice UI and breaking point, checking point features. So it's easy to interact and find the issues compared to using the developer console or setup debug logs. And this Apex replay debugger is again is part of the Salesforce extension package. So if you guys already installed the extension package and it's available within that. And uh, when compared coming to the Apex Replay debugger, the working. So we lastly saw about the JavaScript debugging and we added the breakpoint. Code execution stops at that breakpoint. And when we play, then only it will proceed further. But Apex side, we are not going to stop the actual execution. It just uh, Visual Studio side, it simulates like stopping. What happens? Complete transaction is run on the Apex side. Then we download the Apex debug log in the Visual Studio code. Then we simulate like it is actually running and stopping, but it's not actually stopping at the particular point. It just uh, based on the debug logs, uh, we simulate that live session. And uh, we don't need to add a lot of system.debug statements uh, uh, for checking it. Uh, so we, we have nice UI in Visual Studio code where we can easily fix it. And also we will see the details about the breakpoint and checkpoint uh, at the high level. Uh, breakpoint is something that we use commonly. Uh, it's like JavaScript breakpoint and checkpoint is used on list set map variables mostly to identify the values in the right format. In breakpoint also it will display all the value variable variables values but in the checkpoint it will display in the good format. Uh, that is the different uh, and there is a difference in how we are adding and handling it that we will be seeing it everyone of us this is how we were creating the debug log so far i just wanted to show this whatever the logic we used in the minimal trigger framework uh, same we are going to utilize uh, in this session also so same when the spent effort is added in the time sheet it needs to update the uh, project task. So we are going to see how the debug log is getting created for this and how we can see the values of these variables. Okay, so uh, this is the Salesforce org and I already imported the code and first I need to enable the debug log. Here you can see recording detailed logs until 13.45. So it is in the user time zone. So I connected with my user and I am having IST time zone and it's telling it was recording the debug log until 145 now it is 580 so i need to turn on the debug log again otherwise it's not going to work so in classic way we will go to debug log or we will go to the developer console log tab or enabling the debug log but for here uh, you can select the control shift to p as always for running any command and uh, you can see there is one command called turn on apex debug log for replay debugger uh, you can select that Okay, cool. So it's uh, successfully ran. And now you guys can see recording detailed logs until 6.2. So by default, it enabled the debug log for me until 6.2. And this debug log level is finest. You can see for Apex and Visual Force at the finest log level. So it's the most uh, advanced information that we can get it with the finest level. So always you make sure you verify whether your debug log is active for the time that you are checking now. So now our debug log is active. So the next thing is I am going to uh, do some operations. So let me add one more time sheet. So 
so i created one more time sheet so this is one and this is nine and a 10 is updated correctly i just wanted to show how we can see the debug logs and uh, all those uh, list and variables are visible so now we performed one transaction we need to get that debug log from salesforce so for that we need to select get abx debug logs okay so it will show all the debug logs which was saved based on the time only we need to select and uh, you guys might aware if there is in any debug log like common dot api soap direct soap with the less kp values this is not the right one whatever is having error and having good amount of kp values that is the correct so now its time is around uh, 5:33 we ran this debug log so this is the correct one so i am selecting this debug log so debug log is opened now so after that uh, uh you can see there is a nice view of the debug log even though that is having lot of line number it's really hard to debug uh, in the developer console here you can easily run and search all those things you can do it here i am going to select launch apex replay debugger with current file okay so you guys can see here there is pause button and uh, step over all these things are came and if you are seeing this view you can select this this is the right view for the checking the debug logs and here you can see there is nothing is there in the variable only call stack is there and there is no breakpoint and checkpoint because we didn't add anything so let's assume uh, we are having some issue in the recently created uh, apex class where we are doing this sum up and we need to see whether this time sheet record is fetching correctly and showing correctly so for that let me open the apex class this is the apex class okay so here uh, i want to see what are the task it is fetching what are the time sheet is fetching so i am adding breakpoint so you can see one red line is there red uh, sorry red round is there so here here when we add this breakpoint it will apply it will so here also okay so now we added the two breakpoints so let me go here and let me play this so once i play this you guys can see it directly went to this apex class till this line number and it stopped this is how it did it in javascript console but there it was real time but here we are doing with the generated debug logs we are de debugging with the already generated debug logs so we can see till this point task id is this and it is having only zero one value this this task id value it is showing so i am going to the next line so now you can see this task map value is filled here so it fetched only one task with a total spent effort of nine it means it was nine already before uh, calculating right so that value it is showing so next uh, let me add one more breakpoint also okay so we can also see the time sheet fetched in this line number it fetched the time sheet one is having nine and another one is having one so you can see this is wrong long line number okay so like this you can easily identify and uh, you can add the breakpoint and you can see what is what was the value in that breakpoint so if you use the checkpoint uh, currently we are seeing this uh, uh, multiple uh, rows in the single line right but if you use the checkpoint uh, it will be like more advanced uh, let's see how that works so works so for this i am uh, toggling this to checkpoint let me first uh, clear all the things so actually breakpoint is easy checkpoint uh, you guys need to do some more things so some more extra steps so if you are comfortable with this display format you just copy paste in the notepad and you can use that instead of going with the checkpoint because there are more steps are needed for the checkpoint compared to the breakpoint so breakpoint can be generated on the fly like after debug log is created then also we can add the breakpoint but for checkpoint first we need to add the checkpoint and we need to deploy it to the salesforce then salesforce generate the debug log with the checkpoint after that we will be replaying that so uh, for explanation purpose let's see about the checkpoint also let me first remove all the breakpoint so that is something called remove all breakpoint i removed it so i am adding here one breakpoint and i will convert this to checkpoint so for that i will select the double checkpoint okay so now this is checkpoint let me also add a checkpoint for this okay so now we have two checkpoint you can see 
for if it is check point there is two line is coming inside the red round i am not sure if that is visible but uh, that's how it will look so when i was testing the checkpoint it was not working that time let's see whether it is working uh, before that let me pass this uh, debugging session i passed it so now we have the two checkpoint in our apex code we need to upload this to salesforce we need to tell next time when you generate the debug log you need to have information with the proper structure for these two places that's what we are trying to tell so i'm uploading it let's see if it is getting success okay cool so it's uh, successfully uploaded so we added two checkpoint that was successfully uploaded so now let's uh, repeat the function and see uh, how the values are displaying after we add the checkpoint instead breakpoint so let me create one more record or let's just modify this record only i am changing from one to two i saved it so now i am same process we need to get the debug log from the salesforce get apex debug log sir and we can see based on the time we need to pick it 542 we have this file and it is having good size so this is the right file i opened it and i am doing right click and i am launching the apex replay debugger with current file it is launching it launched so now i am clicking play so again it came here and it stopped so now you guys can see the difference between the breakpoint and checkpoint so if you see the task map it is displaying in the proper format so before it was single row but now you can see it is coming in the separate line and even values are coming in the separate line with the nice format okay so this is the difference between the breakpoint and checkpoint you get the variable value display at the nice format sometimes if if the values that you are going to see is in the complex structure that you are unable to identify properly with the breakpoint that time checkpoint will be really helpful okay this is fine only one is there uh, sorry this is fine only one is there let's go to next uh, let's see how times it is displaying see before there was only one line i was searching for second row but now let's expand and see now see it's very simple we can see zero row and the first row so this is really helpful because it's in the nice format and you can easily debug uh, how it is stored in the list set map so checkpoint is really helpful for the list set map for displaying in the great format so if we expand zero you can also see inner level uh, field details okay with the checkpoint there are some limitation if you added the checkpoint and created the debug log you need to uh, run that uh, replay that debug log within 30 minutes otherwise it will not work and you can add only maximum of five checkpoints but in the breakpoint there is no limitation only because uh, we can add that in on the fly itself so there is no limitations so so far i explained uh, how to uh, turn on the debug logs and uh, how to update the record and uh, open the debug log and replay that so even when you run the test class it will automatically generate the debug logs uh, apex replay debugger so let's go to any test class uh, before that let me stop this uh, replay debugger which is running so you can go to one by one line number wise and you can see the values populated also okay so let's see so if by clicking this uh, icon you can go to one by one line number and see what is the value each line is having all those things like how you debug the javascript let me stop this so you guys start using the this so uh, like uh, since this is the first time it may look uh, difficult but when you start using it uh, you will reduce a lot of time compared to the Apex debug log. Importantly, your mind can fresh because uh, going through that uh, Apex generated debug logs in the browser is really difficult. But here we get in the very nice format. Okay. So here you guys can see a debug test is there. Uh, it will be there uh, for all the test methods. So if it is uh, his test method and we can either run the test or debug the test running the test means it will actually run debugging means it will just do the debug and see whether it is the success or not 
So when you click debug test, it will automatically initiate the Apex replay debugger. Let's try that. Okay, so it looks like we need to get that uh, file again. Uh, so now we executed the debug test. So again, it would have generated the debug logs uh, for this uh, debug test that we ran uh, now. Let's see if we are having the debug logs for that. Uh, yeah, we can see 547. Uh, it generated one more debug log, which is run test synchronous. Uh, so by clicking that, we can use the open the debug log file related to this also. So uh, debug log is getting generated automatically when you guys are running the test method also. And also when you are doing any operations. So once you enabled this debug log and it's on for the 30 minutes, uh, whatever the actions you are doing it, it is generating the debug log and you can get the debug log inside the Visual Studio code and you can perform the further debugging. Uh, you need to start using this to get more familiarized uh, with this, uh, but it will definitely help. We can use this for a lot of uh, use cases. I just explained today how to use that, but it can be used in many use cases once you get familiarized with that and the Salesforce will definitely release more advanced features in align with this Apex replay debugger. So you need to start using that. So you need to say no to developer console going forward. So you have everything here. I think we have Sakul query runner also in the Visual Studio code itself. It's a very easy interface. So here you can easily select the object fields and you can run the okay, only one project is there. So it is displaying. So it's very fast. So you need to remove complete developer console dependency and utilize all the features uh, which is provided by the Visual Studio code. So it will definitely increase your efficiency and productivity. And also you are on top of the latest technology, utilizing the latest technology. Uh, thank you, everyone.